Hey guys and welcome to Fertility Fridays. Uh, first, let's start off with an update. Um, a lot of you have probably followed the weekly vlogs that I've seen that last week the medication affected me immensely. Uh, you would have probably noticed how I was down and sad and depressed and lonely. I was working four to midnights and all of my projects seemed to be falling apart. I was lying in bed all day or running to the bathroom because two of the symptoms that you can have with the metformin medication that I am taking to prevent um, overstimulation of the ovaries when I will be taking the injections and also to help people who have PCOS which is polycystic um, ovary syndrome. Um, since I was always running to the bathroom and feeling weak, I did not go to the gym and I was working for him at night so I wasn't seeing my husband so I was really sad and depressed and really lonely and I did not do well with that medication at all in the first week. It was very very hard because having nausea and diarrhea it is not fun at all and you feel weak and tired and if it wasn't for the fact that it would be in the morning mostly I would have missed work also. This week I did miss work. I missed work yesterday because of that. Um, at first, my first thought was I got gastroenteritis, and that would be because um, Kelly, my stepdaughter, and Julie, her mom, both seemed to have had it at the beginning of the week, and I thought I caught it from them, but I, I soon realized it was probably because my meds, even if I had had no symptoms on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, it's probably my medication because the gastroenteritis does not last four hours. It usually lasts 24 hours. So probably side effects from my medication. Why did it come up again yesterday? I would not be able to tell you, um, but I did read online that it was normal for that to happen. So I did risk work for that yesterday. This morning I woke up with a lot of nausea. I did regurgitate once. However, I did not have any other symptoms. Oh, thank God. Two other symptoms that you can have with this medication are headaches, which I do not feel like if I've had more of. I currently do have a headache right now. But I really don't think it's because of that. I think it's more because of allergies, because it's allergy season. The house is a little dusty, you did not have time to vacuum today. So I really don't think that it's because of the medication. Also, it causes bloating. But with the fact that I have I am lactose intolerant and I do have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, also. I'm just so lucky, aren't I? I can't tell you if I'm bloating more because of that and my difficulty digesting a lot of food or it's really the medication. No idea to know. But I don't feel more bloated at all than I normally do so I have a feeling that it is not because of that medication. Thank God. Um, other than that, this week has been okay for the meds. I have not felt any worse other than yesterday and a bit this morning. I was able to do my day, day for the rest of the afternoon. Um, I'm able to do my video right now without looking too distraught. I had time to do my makeup, and do my hair. It's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so for, for the meds, everything is fine. Of course, there are new meds that are going to start in two weeks. Uh, I will have seven days of medication. I do not know the side effects of those ones yet, but that will be step one before the big med start, the injections, which I'm still very, very scared of. I'm afraid of the vomiting and all of that. Um, I do not know exactly what to expect and how that's going to go. I know that I am very, very inclined to vomiting easily, so, and if only metformin is already doing this to me, imagine what it would be with those injections. I'm stressed out, but also nervous, but also excited. It's all at once because I'm afraid of the effects that the medication is going to have on me, but I can't wait to be there because it's finally here, sort of a thing. It's finally going to be there. I'm finally going to start really being closer to having a baby, which is a project that we've been working on for so long and something that I've wanted since I was a very little girl. I'm one of those girls who's always knew that she wanted to be a mother. A lot of people, when they were young, they were told, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I always knew I wanted to be a mother. It's always been something really important to me, and I've been blessed to be a stepmother right now and to have been a stepmother for the last three years, so that kind of jump-started my family, which is kind of cool. Um, I've always thought that I would have hated being a stepmom, but it has taught me a lot about patience and a lot about acceptance and um, empathy. 
it has brought a lot that to me, which were things I was afraid of that I wouldn't have a lot with my kids. I thought it'd be too severe, that I wouldn't have been too empathetic, that I would be very strict and very distant. Um, but they say it's different when you have your own kids. I had a stepdaughter and I already see a difference. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. Another thing I would like to talk to you guys about is the taboo that is all around in vitro fertilization and uh, actually fertility problems in general. Um, I have no problem talking about my fertility treatments and how I feel about fertility issues. A lot of people find themselves hiding this all and um, leaving, living this in secrecy. And every time that people come up to me because we've only been married for a year and say, Hey, why are you guys having kids? I feel no shame or shyness to say we're actually under fertility treatment, so it's not for tomorrow morning. And a lot of people are like, oh, and I have some people say, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, no, we're fine. We're living through it. We're good. And um, I remember talking about it at the lunch table once at work and just being really open about it and saying, well, you know, actually, my doctor told me that one couple out of three will encounter fertility treatments not necessarily both of them and not necessarily having to go all the way to IVF some of them only need um, to be told to relax that their hormones are out of balance to eat a little better to do more exercise to calm their nerves but a couple out of three supposedly has fertility issues and will encounter problems conceiving um, some people are very lucky like my best friend Emily and her fiance Christian they have two beautiful daughters which you've seen in our vlogs before and I know for a fact that Emily and him did not really try for a long time if I'm not mistaken under three months both of them were conceived and they were very lucky and they're I am so happy for them and I've always wished that for me and I've always been told that it'd be that for me my family was 100% sure that I'd be 100% fertile and that I'd have kids just like that fact is no that's not at all how it is for me and uh, it was hard at first, I won't lie, last December 2013 I did have a whole meltdown and a depression and I was off work for three weeks to recuperate myself and to bring myself together because we had a bit of an issue and my doctor said, well, don't worry about it, a couple out of three has issues and maybe you just need a bit of help in my head. Jeff already has a daughter and here we are, so it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be easy, easy peasy, and let's go. First try and it was apart and uh, yeah so I, I took it hard I'm not saying that I'm taking it necessarily easy and that it's not always like this for me every day but the taboo around it I would say you don't have to be ashamed or think that you're on normal fertility issues is not the end of the world um, it's not any worse than anything else and you can go ahead and talk about it if you feel that it's too hard to share fine then be it secrecy if you wish but I have seen by experience and by other vloggers people who have vlogged in secret and then put it up who you hear them say why did I keep this a secret why am I leave, living this all on my own I have no one to talk to and that is an issue that you can have and to be able to reach out to people and to talk to people for me has been a lot of help at the beginning I did keep it secret until about January I had told a couple of friends only and um, I had kept it, kept it very, very secret. And even from January until about April, I was having a lot of trouble with it and trouble accepting it. And I wasn't speaking much about it. But now that I speak about it and now that I talk about it and now that I'm actually vlogging about it and explaining how this works and how it works for me and what I'm going through, I find it way easier to deal with. Right now I am choked up. So if you hear my voice a little, it's an, I don't have a cold. I'm not... And this is how I am. It's my nervousness. My throat closes up out of stress because I'm always afraid of saying too much or saying, the, or saying something that will hurt somebody. And I know this is an issue that touches a lot of people and that affects a lot of people and that it's hard to deal with for, for many. But I'm here to tell you, if you need to speak, write to us. Write it to us at our email address. I will be happy to talk to you if you do not want to put comments down below reach out I'm here for you too so that's all for this week I hope um, you guys found this interesting and I'll see you next week bye guys love you I feel good at all so unfortunately the gym kind of took a back step last week I went on the Monday and I went on Sunday now I went again Monday